Okay, so what we've successfully done is created a database with four tables and a query. We last created the relationship that exists between all the tables, so we're ready to start building the queries and forms. But before we do, we want to do one more step, not to this system, but we actually want to do something to stop future problems. So what I'm going to do is close this now. Um, I do want to show you that quickly again actually I'm going to open that up just to show you something else that's at the back there you'll notice that there's this file suddenly disappeared when I went onto this this appears when you've opened up access and this creates a locked record so this is actually a backup of your data and it really is important not to try and delete this system or anything else leave it as it is when you close down a database it works it's part of the structure okay good what we're going to do is at the moment we're working on a single presentation this one here we're looking at the single database and that's this thing the purple one in the center at the moment when you first build a database we generally build a database with the database in the center and all users can use that database the problem with that approach is many fold number one if you ever want to work on the interface uh, let's say you want to add a new form or anything else you can't do so while people are using the data so what you need to do is you need to remove the database from their from their use which means that while you're working on the system or changing uh, structures of data or anything else the users cannot use the database in any way shape or form if you're working on the interface they cannot be there because you could mess up things they could mess up things so they would lose access to the database the next thing to this one is if one of those users accidentally corrupts the database by and it, that can happen that I'll explain one of the ways that can happen later on but the simple fact is it could happen then it doesn't just affect them it affects everyone but equally because they've corrupted the interface that actually could run the risk of corrupting the entire database and includes all of that sensitive data another point is that if a user wishes to they could actually gain access to your database tables and change the structure the relationship they could go around and cause devastation at that very low level of your database because they've got access to it you want to actually stop your user from having access to that database so it's ideal if we could have found a way to separate them out but another problem with this is that access can only handle according to Microsoft up to 25 concurrent connections that's 25 people using it at the same time now from my experience I've known that be lower than 25 in fact dependent upon your network it can be as low as five five people logging into your database can cause it to corrupt and that's going to potentially run, run the risk of damaging all your data as well or at the very least stop anyone from using it at that time you really don't want that to happen this is a bad design so what's a solution well one of the solutions is to hand each user their own database well this is absolutely ludicrous if I hand them their own database then first of all I can't back up the database because it's all over the place but instantly one of my customers phones up and wants their data changed everyone's databases are now out of date the let's say the blue person's database their database they've had a phone call from the customer they've made a payment to their account the orange person is looking at the database and they find the very same customer hasn't paid their bill so they phone up to say excuse me you haven't paid your bill now the customer says yes I have I paid it and I paid it yesterday and the other the orange person says no you haven't it's not in our system you need to pay so the person pays again and then the green person and so on and so forth your data is out of date it's a ludicrous system it's given each user access to your data so it's not solved the data access problem if the interface corrupts it still corrupts for that individual it hasn't solved any problems it's introduced new ones so that's a completely ludicrous model however this is a potential solution what we have here is the data is in the center the database is actually just the tables the tables and the relationship are in the center of the system the interface part the forms reports the queries are all on the outer give their own interface 
Now if you're working on the interface, you can work on your own version of the interface, making changes, adding new forms, and when it's finished, you simply deploy it out to all your users so they get the latest version of the interface. If one user's interface corrupts, that's not a problem, you simply replace their interface. It runs no damage to other people's interfaces and it runs no risk of damaging the data. Because you've removed the users from the data, they can't get to the data itself directly. They'd need to know where the data is. And there's another benefit of this, is that you can hide the data. So they cannot even find it. So you will solve that problem. Last and by no means least, it's easy to back up the data without having to back up the interface. So you're not actually backing up all those forms and reports every single evening. You're simply backing up the data. So in all respects, this system is better. We separate the interface from our data. We get a better system. So can we do that? Well, the answer is yes, we can. Here's our driving school database. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename the file data. This has got, as we've already seen, all our tables and our query and our relationship. We've got them all there. In fact, as I've already said, the query shouldn't be here. That should be in an in interface area. But let's not worry about that at the moment. I'm now going to go to Access and I'm going to create a new database. I'm going to direct to the same location as my other them. And I'm going to call this one driving school interface create I'm going to close this form down and I'm going to close this down now we've got the driving school data and the driving school interface it's this interface we will give it to all the users and the data will be a single file so this might be multiple files of this multiple versions of driving school interface but only ever will there be one driving school data Let's open this again. First thing we've got to do is make a connection between the interface and the data. And that's simple. We go to external data. We go to access. We browse. And we find driving school database. There's the data. That's where we want to make the link. We don't want to pull the tables in. We don't want the tables to exist in the interface. We simply need to want to make a connection to the tables so that this system can read the tables. So we link to the data store. There's all the tables. We select them all. We click on OK. There they are. Though it looks like we've got the tables, the arrow tells us that these are linked. It means that I can see the data. It means I could try to see the design. But I would be warned that I can't do anything to the design. It can't be modified. The design can't be modified. Why not? Because it's not here. So I don't want to open that. So I've now got a safe, secure system. I can add and edit and view and delete data, but I can't actually corrupt the system itself. I can even see the relationship, but I can't do anything to the relationship. It doesn't affect the system. Do you remember that query that we had in the earlier system? Well, let's pull that into here because it should be in the interface. So external access. Browse database, there it is. This time we're not going to link, we're actually going to take that query and bring it to this database. So click on OK, queries, choose the query, OK. Don't worry about saving your steps unless you really want to. The simple fact is the query is here. No arrow, it exists here. The query is editable because it belongs in this database. So we have that system here. I'm going to close this down now. I'm going to go into the data. And since I've imported this, I'm going to delete this from here. This still exists. That's what I want. But now my query only exists in here. Just to prove that it's not linked. It still works because it's over here. And it's still using these tables. So you can still use these over here. Now if you move your database around, there's a possibility that the system will break. That's fine. All we need to do then is sort out the linked table manager. 
So if you find that these aren't being found and it's not working or anything else, go to your linked table manager, select all of these, tick always prompt for new location, and then click on OK. It'll go off, go and find your data, and it will tell you that the, for the relationship's been formed again. Do be aware of that because that's a common mistake. People find their table stop working, think their database is broken, and it's not. But do remember, you need to click and ensure that your data is accessible to your interface. If you separated them by miles with no network connection between them, then clearly your interface cannot be worked on because it cannot access the tables. That's created the separation between the two. That's allowing us now to work on the interface. Our data is nice, safe, and secure. We've done everything to our data. We followed our data dictionary. That's the data side, the relationship side sorted. Now we can worry about queries, the forms, or themes, I don't mind, forms and reports.